Hi guys, my name is Jack, and today we're going to take a look at another horrible case with you. The Jared Bragan case. From love to contracted end of life. No matter how many years a couple has spent together or how happy their marriage was, divorces often lead to a breakdown in amicable or at the very least respectful relationships. But sometimes former husbands and wives part ways as true adversaries. Once close partners deliberately make each other's lives miserable, inflict harm, or wish for the other's demise. In rare instances, it doesn't stop at mere wishes, escalating to actual physical confrontations. Today, we'll examine such a case. To begin, it's important to note that the case surrounding the death of 33-year-old Jared Bragan, an employee of Microsoft and father of four young children, has yet to reach a conclusion. Currently, Three individuals have been arrested on charges of conspiracy to commit a planned confrontation resulting in Bragan's death. Two of them face the ultimate penalty of capital punishment. This sensational story that unfolded in the sunny state of Florida has, without exaggeration, shaken the entire country. Its protagonists are parents of multiple children, once bound by marriage. The motive for the crime is alarmingly mundane a refusal to split jointly acquired assets and custody of their offspring. However, the approach to ending Bragan's life resembles a complex detective plot. Let's explore how former spouses and deeply religious individuals became the worst of enemies and why it all ended in a tragic demise. Who was Jared Bragan? Jared J. Bragan was born in 1989 in Florida into a modest family where he was the second of two sons. He grew up alongside his older brother, Adam, with whom he was practically inseparable from childhood. The brother's parents were devout members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. T. As a teenager, Jared met a girl named Mallory Bowden at church. The two developed a romantic relationship, and Bowden would later refer to Jared as her first true love. However, their relationship never led to marriage as cohabitation was discouraged within their religious community. Therefore, when Jared graduated from a Florida arts high school in 2007 and decided to further his education in another state, they parted ways. Jared moved to Utah, where he enrolled in college, meeting his future first wife. In 2009, at the age of 20, Jared Bragan met a woman named Shanna Gardner at a friend's birthday party. She was two years his senior and came from a well-off family. She was also a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, previously mentioned. Shanna was born in 1987, and her parents, Starling and Shelley Gardner, were co-founders of a major company called Stampin' Up!, which specialized in the production and sale of decorative and craft items. By 2010, it was reported that their family business, headquartered in Salt Lake City, was generating an annual revenue of $100 million. Shanna has a sister named Sarah, who currently holds a managerial position in the family business. As an heiress to such a wealthy family, Shanna grew up in luxury and was accustomed to living a life of leisure without ever working in her trained profession as a chef. She was described as enthusiastic and somewhat fickle. According to Mallory, who was mentioned earlier, Jared was initially not too interested in his new acquaintance. However, Shanna went out of her way to entice him with her lavish lifestyle, hinting that together they could travel the world and do as they pleased since her parents would financially support them. Family Life and the Birth of Twins Just a few months after their first encounter, the couple got engaged, and by early 2010, Less than a year after they met, they celebrated a lavish wedding in a temple in Salt Lake City, Utah, with the Gardner family covering all expenses for the ceremony and reception. This quick move to marriage was influenced by the couple's religious beliefs, which frowned upon cohabitation and lengthy engagements. Following their wedding, the newlyweds settled in Utah, where the bride's parents helped them purchase a comfortable home valued at about a million dollars. Each spouse also had their own Mercedes, despite Jared still being a student at the time and Shanna not working at all. The couple traveled extensively around the world, sharing numerous photos of their exciting trips, expensive purchases, 
and leisure activities on their social media profiles. According to close acquaintances, Shanna's parents gave the couple around $10,000 monthly for various expenses and also granted them free access to their accounts. Moreover, after Jared completed his degree, his in-laws generously provided him with $100,000 to start his own business. In 2013, the couple welcomed twins, a daughter, Abigail, and a son, Liam. The family moved to Connecticut for a time, but soon after, Liam was diagnosed with a heart condition and lung issues. Doctors recommended moving closer to the sea, noting that it would benefit the child's health. The Bragans relocated to Florida, where they purchased a two-story comfortable home near the coastline at Ponte Vedra Beach, south of Jacksonville. At this time, Shanna actively managed her own blog on social media, portraying herself as a loving wife, a caring mother to the twins, a professional chef, and a woman passionate about travel and sports. She took fitness seriously and visited the gym nearly every day. Seeing her dedication, Jared decided to surprise his beloved and hired a personal trainer for her. The Scandalous Divorce Shortly after moving, clear issues emerged in the marriage, though the couple stubbornly pretended everything was fine. Shanna became disillusioned with their religion, almost ceasing church attendance, while her husband remained a devout and exemplary member. This difference in religious commitment led to arguments, misunderstandings, and tension. Reportedly, Shanna also became disillusioned with Jared, whom she perceived as too lazy, having gained weight and still only half-heartedly attempting to get his business off the ground. After completing online courses in programming and design, Jared secured a position at Microsoft, finally starting to earn independently. A few years later, he advanced to a senior manager role. Nonetheless, the couple grew increasingly distant, and arguments became a routine occurrence in their household. The situation escalated when Jared accidentally discovered intimate exchanges between his wife and her personal fitness trainer. According to some sources, Shanna had an affair, which the trainer confirmed in a phone conversation with Jared, though Shanna vehemently denied these claims. Jared then reached out to Mallory Bowden via email, lamenting that his wife had grown distant and emotionally attached to her gym trainer. Despite this, he expressed willingness to forgive the infidelity and preserve their family for the sake of their children. In 2015, after nearly six years of marriage, the couple began a contentious and scandalous divorce process. They contested over shared assets and custody rights for their children, far from amicably. Jared publicly accused his ex-wife of infidelity, which she categorically denied, claiming the marriage had simply lost its love. In response, she accused him of cruelty and offensive behavior. Shanna was unwilling to divide their home, cars, and bank account funds, arguing that nearly everything they acquired over the years was purchased or gifted by her parents. Jared had only started working less than a year prior, having previously focused on his studies and unsuccessfully trying to establish his business with funds from his in-laws. Jared contested this viewpoint, claiming at least half of their Florida home. Custody of the twins also sparked numerous disputes. Shanna claimed that Jared, whenever with the children, tried to turn them against her. He allegedly coached them on what to say about their mother and recorded their statements to present in court. Jared, in turn, accused his ex-wife of comprehensive surveillance, including installing hidden cameras in their home, tapping his phone calls, and placing a tracker in his car to monitor his movements. Shanna sought sole custody of the children and the exclusive ownership of their seaside home. She also claimed Jared threatened to withdraw all the money from their children's trust funds for his personal use. Jared countered by alleging his ex-wife evaded taxes by working off the books at her parents' company and receiving tens of thousands of dollars. New Families, Old Disputes By the end of 2015, the court had mandated joint custody of the children, but that hardly put an end to the disputes between Jared and Shanna. Even after their divorce was officially finalized, they continued to meet in court for nearly seven more years, leading up to the tragic conclusion of their saga. By this time, both had moved on to start new families and have more children. In 2016, Jared met a woman named Christina, a fellow Microsoft employee 
who lived and worked in North Carolina. Initially, their interactions were strictly professional, but they gradually grew closer, and a few months later, Christina moved to Florida to be with Jared. In the fall of 2017, they married, and by February 2019, they welcomed their first child together, a daughter named Bexley. In August 2021, their son London was born. Shanna, too, remarried in 2018, tying the knot with Mario Fernandez, a man a year her junior who owned a real estate business. That same year, they welcomed their son Michael. The family resided in the same house where Shanna had lived with her first husband, Jared, the house that had been a battleground in their court disputes. The presence of new families did not calm the waters between the ex-spouses, who continued to file lawsuits against each other with new demands. Jared insisted that Shanna's new husband, Mario, should not be allowed to be with the twins if their mother was absent. Conversely, he wanted his new wife, Christina, to be fully involved in the upbringing of his older children. The last court meeting between Jared and Shanna occurred four months before Jared's death and was exceptionally tense. They exchanged another round of mutual accusations and contested the rights to their property. Shanna claimed that Jared was preventing her from using the family's larger, more comfortable vehicle for transporting the children because he was more concerned with humiliating the mother than with the convenience and safety of his own children. At this point, the court granted Shanna exclusive rights to use the larger vehicle and ordered Jared to pay her $600 in compensation. The tragic end on a secluded road. Per the agreement between the ex-spouses, Jared picked up the twins on Wednesdays for a family dinner, including their younger sister, Bexley. Christina sometimes joined them, but after the birth of London, she spent most of her time with the newborn, preferring not to leave him with babysitters. On Wednesday, February 22, 2022, Jared, following routine, took the children to a coastal cafe after picking them up. After dinner and a stroll, he dropped the twins back at their mother's house and then headed home on his usual route. The journey typically took about 40 minutes, part of which traversed a rather deserted stretch of road without streetlights. It was here that Bregan encountered an unexpected obstacle. Driving slowly and cautiously, aware of his three-year-old daughter asleep in her car seat, it was around nine in the evening, and the sun had set when suddenly, in the headlights, he spotted a tire lying in his lane. He stopped, activated his hazard lights, and got out to move the tire to the side of the road. That's when the shots rang out. Jared had no chance to escape. The perpetrator, acting with deadly precision, fired several bullets at close range before fleeing the scene. The child, dozing in the car, was unharmed. A passerby, nearby at the time, heard the shots and cautiously approached. Discovering Jared lying in a pool of blood, he immediately called the police and paramedics. But tragically, it was too late to save the victim. The investigation and initial suspicions Christina called her husband just minutes before the incident, and he informed her that he had just dropped off the children and would be home in about 15 minutes. However, 30 minutes passed, then an hour, and Jared was nowhere to be seen, and stopped answering his phone calls. Anxiously trying his number again, Christina was answered by a police officer who informed her of the incident and requested her immediate presence at the Jacksonville Beach Police Station. The investigation team at the scene determined that the obstacle on the road, a tire, was the reason for Jared's vehicle stopping. They concluded that he had exited his car to remove the obstacle, but was then shot. His three-year-old daughter, asleep in the car, was unharmed, indicating she was not the target of the mysterious shooter. Furthermore, no valuables were missing from the vehicle, where a wallet with cash, a phone, and a tablet were left, effectively dismissing the robbery theory almost immediately. When asked whether her husband had any known enemies, antagonists, or recent conflicts, Christina stated she was unaware of anyone wishing harm upon her husband other than his first wife, Shana. However, she refrained from making direct accusations without incontrovertible evidence. The police reported a lack of surveillance footage due to the absence of cameras on the stretch of road where the incident occurred. A witness who heard the shots claimed they broke the silence of the night, 
preceded by neither screeching brakes nor loud screams or any other noise. However, they did hear the sound of a vehicle speeding away, though nothing was visible in the darkness. Christina's suggestion of Shanna's involvement in the crime seemed plausible to investigators. Yet, detectives knew it was unlikely she acted directly, especially given her solid alibi of being at home with her husband, the twins, her younger son, and her parents, who were visiting. The police decided to check nearby surveillance cameras. The footage showed an old dark blue Ford F-150 with brown trim entering the area about 15 minutes before the incident, and again a few minutes after the shots were reported by the witness. Detectives turned to the public for help in identifying the vehicle of interest. Jared's family made television appeals, urging anyone with even the slightest information potentially related to the case to come forward. The first suspect arrested Shanna and her current husband, Mario, were repeatedly called in for questioning, but vehemently denied any involvement in the murder. Shanna didn't hide the fact that her relationship with her ex-husband was complicated, but she insisted she would never wish harm upon the father of her children. She also shared with the media how the nine-year-old twins reacted to the news of their father's death. According to her, Abigail cried uncontrollably for hours, while Liam was in shock and silent for a long time. It's worth noting that neither the ex-spouse nor the older children attended Jared's funeral. Christina had told Shanna that her presence at the farewell ceremony was highly unwelcome, to which Shanna responded that if she wasn't allowed to be there, the twins wouldn't attend the burial either. It wasn't until January 2023, almost a year after Mr. Bragan's murder, that the first suspect was arrested. The police had been silent about the progress of the investigation, only noting that it involved considerable resources and effort. After an exhaustive search for the dark blue Ford F-150, Luck finally smiled on the investigation when the vehicle was involved in an accident, but left the scene before the police arrived. This time, the incident occurred in a crowded area with many witnesses, and the offender was identified the same day thanks to multiple camera recordings. The car was owned by 62-year-old Henry Tienan, an unemployed man with previous convictions. He was charged with second-degree premeditated murder using a firearm, participation in a criminal conspiracy with the intent to commit murder, and setting up an ambush with an obstruction for the victim. Jacksonville Beach Police Chief Jonathan Paul Smith and City Prosecutor Melissa Nelson announced these charges during a press conference. It was also revealed that Tenen did not act alone and was giving testimony against his accomplices, though no other names were disclosed at that time to protect the integrity of the ongoing investigation. Understanding the severity of the charges against him and the lengthy prison term he faced, Tenen decided to make a deal with law enforcement, hoping his cooperation would be considered favorably during sentencing and potentially reduce his punishment. The criminal trio unraveled information soon leaked to the press that the accused, Tenen, had been renting a small house with a friend owned by Mario Fernandez. Tenon's housemate was also brought in for questioning, but was unable to provide any valuable information about the case. He didn't even have personal dealings with the owner of their rental, only passing his share of the rent through Henry. However, a thorough search of the house revealed a hidden pistol in the accused's room, which, according to ballistic tests, was identified as the murder weapon. This further implicated Tenon in the crime. On March 16, 2023, Mario Fernandez was arrested after Tenon officially pleaded guilty and agreed to testify against Mario, whom he named as the contractor of the crime. Fernandez faced charges of first-degree murder, criminal conspiracy, and incitement to commit a serious crime. Rumors swirled that Shanna was the mastermind behind the murder. This was supported by her former lover, a fitness trainer who recounted how she had expressed a long-standing dislike for her then-husband and wished for his demise. A tattoo artist, where Shanna frequented, also testified. She recalled Shanna complaining about the endless legal battles with her ex-husband, wishing to silence him forever and inquiring if she knew someone who could help. Initially taken as a grim joke, Shanna repeated her inquiry months later, clearly indicating her seriousness. 
Shanna Gardner Fernandez vehemently denied all allegations against her. She declared her intention to stay in town and assist the investigation. However, a few months after her husband's arrest, she moved to Washington with the twins and her youngest son. On August 17, 2023, she faced the same charges as her current husband. Arrested in her Washington apartment, she was extradited to Florida, where she would stand trial alongside the criminal trio. The motive for her actions was cited as complicated relationships with her ex-husband, a desire to avoid sharing custody of their two children, and the ambition to solely possess all disputed assets. The ongoing legal battle. As of now, the case remains open, and legal proceedings against all conspirators are underway. Tenon has pleaded guilty to all charges, is actively cooperating with the investigation, and hopes for leniency. Reports suggest he faces at least 15 years in prison, a substantial period for someone of his advanced age, potentially equivalent to a life sentence. Mario Fernandez has only partially admitted his guilt, and exercising his legal rights, has refused to testify against his wife. On the other hand, Shanna Gardner Fernandez vehemently denies all charges against her. Nevertheless, prosecutors are seeking the death penalty or life imprisonment without the possibility of parole for the couple. Shanna's three children are currently under the care of their maternal grandparents, Starling and Shelley Gardner, and their aunt Sarah. Thanks for watching, guys. That was Jack with you. Subscribe to the channel. There are many shocking stories ahead.